Tesla stock is down 10% or maybe more than 10% at the recording recording of this video it's about 10% and here's the funny thing Tesla did miss the 70 cents EPS target non-gap but if you guys paid attention after markets that's not what brought the stock to where it is now it actually the stock went up it's what Elon said that brought the whole market the whole Tesla stock down and in today's video I'm going to be going over what Elon said in his earnings call because there were some really interesting things that we need to go over because it's a, it's an absolutely a sheesh moment. It really is. And I usually have a stock price prediction what the stock's going to be in Q3. Well, now Q4 up until after Q4 comes up, but that's going to be a long video. If I had this and that one together, it would be an hour long video. So that's not going to happen. That's going to be a separate video that's going to get posted tomorrow. So in today's video, and right now, we're going to go and take a look over what Elon said in his earnings call because there was a lot of interesting things and we're going to conclude it at the end because there it seems like the cyber truck thing is the main reason why the whole stock is down not everything else well some other stuff as well but anyways let's get down to it smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already let's go so i wrote the important things all on my phone because there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff so let's start off with the first one the major news cyber truck Delivery date, November 30th. We finally got a date, and that was the reason why in the pre-market the stock was up 3%, even though it was a miss. The EPS was a miss, big time. And I was a little bit shocked too. If you guys haven't seen the live stream with Oracle, me, and Brian from the Tesla weekend, check it out over here. But I was a bit surprised to see that it was 66 cents. I was expecting 85, but sheesh. Nonetheless, everyone got happy that, oh my God, we're finally getting Cybertruck delivery date on the end of November. So everybody was happy about that. To go deeper into Cybertruck, Elon did say that they're hoping to do 250,000 Cybertrucks per year, mostly by 2025. At the moment in the earnings report, they are saying capacity of 125,000. And in my opinion, that's a 2024 number. Now here is the part, gonna put my phone down. Here is the part why the whole, the whole stock went down. You guys ready for this? Elon said, that it won't be cash flow positive for the next 12 to 18 months. That is the reason why the stock is down 10%. It won't be cash flow positive for the next 12 to 18 months. Wall Street, in their mind, they're like, you know what? If it's not gonna be cash flow positive for the next 12 to 18 months, then we shouldn't add it to our earnings. We shouldn't add it to our profit. So we're gonna take that down. And that is the reason why you're seeing the sell off right now. If Wall Street is like, okay, if, if, if the Cybertruck's gonna come in and give profit, we should add that in. This is what we assume. But now Elon, CEO of Tesla, is coming out and saying it's not going to be cash flow positive. We're not going to make money on it. So hold on. If you're not going to make money on it, that means you, your cost is going to go up. The profits that we have estimated for 2024 for Cybertruck, we got to get rid of that. And your margins are going to be lower. This is a triple whammy for Tesla for Wall Street. Does not like it at all. They'll come back to it by end of 2024 once they probably see Cybertruck can do a positive cash flow. But at the moment, they're going to say, no way, Jose, we're not going to risk it. Remove that from the EPS. Right now, the stock is not worth what it is right now. And the sell-off begins. That's why the stock is down. Sheesh moment right there. But I am glad because if it goes to 200, man, if it goes to 200, I'm going to buy. Simple as that. Elon also said that affordability is key, meaning they will remove unnecessary things from the Cybertruck. So I guess we're not going to get the most glamorous interior, the things that you don't need in it. That's not necessary. They'll remove it. So it looks like it looks like that the car, the truck is not going to have cool features like the S or the X or stuff like that. It's just going to be a truck that has minimum things. Looks like that. Probably, for example, not having the best sound system or something like that. Whatever's not necessary, they remove it so it can be cheaper and affordable for everyone, especially in this time when interest rates are high. Maybe when interest rates are lower, they can probably think of adding cool things to it. But for now, they just want to make it affordable for everyone, according to him. He talked about the compact car. Obviously, that's going to be less, less complex and simple. It won't have any Cybertruck issues. Again, going back to the Cybertruck, Elon did say this is one of a kind and it's very hard to make because it's, it's new technologies, new everything in it. So the compact car won't have all this. So the ransom is going to be easier. The design is going to be easier. Making the vehicle is going to be overall easier. So we won't have any issues with that. The only issue is, is the factory Mexico. We'll get to that in a bit as well because that is a sheesh moment itself and not a good sheesh moment. But anyways, let's keep going forward. He confirmed that they are aiming for 1.8 million vehicle deliveries by end of this year. Personally, I do think it's going to be more than that. But with these margins, though, I don't think it really matters. So that's that AI team. He also said the AI team is the best in the world. Tesla won't be seen as a car company in the future. Why is that? Well, according to him, and this is what I think too as well, my thesis of Tesla as well, all their vehicles are capable of autonomy. Meaning when FSD gets solved and with a snap of a finger, 
all vehicles around the world that can opt in for FSD can opt in for FSD and will have FSD on their vehicle. Not to mention the robo taxi as well, because that's a separate business and licensing. Man, FSD is a whole new world for Tesla. Once that gets solved, as Elon put it himself, and I quote, we're a hardware company with software margins when FSD gets solved. That's why I'm all in into Tesla stock, guys. That is the main reason why. I don't, I'm not in for the cars. If, if Tesla was just only a car company, you guys still gonna go all into Tesla stock? That does not make any sense. Tesla stock is an AI company, a robotics company, a tech company, and as Elon said it himself, a hardware company with software margins as soon as FSD gets solved. Then you have the robot taxi, the licensing. Oh, it's endless. That's why I'm all in into Tesla stock not because of the cars next thing you said here about gigafactory mexico i know guys not in order here but you know it was a long long live session last night so sitting down and actually doing it i was all over the place so he says that they're slowing down on giga mexico amend the micro environments high interest rates wars and uncertain times elon is saying he doesn't want to go full throttle right now he wants to hold back a little bit because he's got ptsd from 2009 he doesn't want to risk it he doesn't want to have to deal with bankruptcies all that kind of stuff which makes sense if you're the captain of a ship and you see these times and right now tesla's 90 percent of their entire or 85 percent of their entire business is coming from cars and cars is a cyclical business and right now with high interest rates cars don't do the best right now so it's Elon's responsibility to try his best to steer this ship in the best possible pa po best possible way ever so it doesn't sink, it doesn't hit a rock. I mean, they're, they have $26 billion in cash right now, so we're good. But nonetheless, he doesn't want to go so far in where at the end it's like, oh man, we're spending so much money and investment on this factory, but yet we're losing money on vehicles now because we're now at 0% profit if that happens. So he's taking the worst of the worst and trying to be conservative and very cautious. We'll get to that in a bit as well. But that, that's what's happening with Giga Mexico. They're, they're not going to go full throttle. They are going to start groundwork, but they're not going to go as Giga Shanghai speed is what he's saying. Here's the interesting part. The Model Y is on track to being the best vehicle selling globally. And the funny part is the second and third, the cost is much less, which is absolutely a sheesh moment. Now here comes advertising. And I have beef. I have a lot of beef with people saying for Tesla to advertise. It's not about Tesla advertising, guys. It's about general EVs. People need to know more more about EVs, not specifically about a Tesla. Everybody knows a Tesla is an EV company, right? Everybody knows that. When the regular person you ask Tesla, oh, isn't that an electric car company? Yes, that's what it is. People don't need to know that a Tesla is an EV company at the moment. They don't need to know that. They need to know that an EV is better than an ICE vehicle. And Tesla doesn't need to be the one to advertise that. But anyways, I had it's a whole discussion on this. I probably have gonna make a separate video going over advertising and why it's just stupid in my opinion and they, sh they shouldn't do it. But this is what Elon says. He says that advertising doesn't work in these times because no one is looking to buy a car. Exactly, that's exactly my point. Elon says there's no point to inform people about a car that they can't afford. Thank you. Thank you, Elon, thank you. There's absolutely no point in that. I don't understand why everyone's banging their chest to do advertisement. The poor guy can't afford a damn car. What do you want to advertise for? Anyways. He also went and said, you have to make it affordable. And at the end of the day, most people don't buy cars straight in cash. Most people don't do that. They finance it or lease it. And what drives financing and leasing? Interest rates, 7% right now. Some can go up as high as 8% right now. Elon clearly mentions that people want to know how much it's going to cost them on a monthly basis. That's it. If it's too high, they're not going to do it. It's that simple. The majority of people out there, it's like, how much is this going to cost me monthly? If it's too high, they're not going to do it. Look at mortgage rates. I mean, from 2000, now they're 6000 if, you, if you're up for renewal or if you're trying to get a mortgage right now. Have fun. Uh, have fun. Seriously. But that's what customers are looking for. They're looking for how much am I paying for a month? If you, whoa, whoa. Okay, I'm 700 up for a car. Not right now, man. No, no, thank you. And most of it is going toward interest. No way. But PG man, Tesla's right now are 329 or 300 bucks a month now. It's so cheap and there's no excuse, man. We're making excuses and Elon's making excuses. No way, man. Uh, did you forget that mortgages are three times more expensive now? Cost of living is more expensive now. Rent is going through the roof. We got mortgages going through the roof. People are trying to cut down on expenses. They're not trying to increase them. And car is, is an expense. Not an asset. Now guys, this is a sheesh moment here. I was a little bit concerned, but it makes sense. It's a good thing that I didn't add this into my valuation model. And by the way, you guys can check it out over here. But Elon says, because we're having delays in the Gigafactory Mexico, 50% CAGR is no longer a thing. Tesla will not be going 50% year over year anymore. If you guys have been watching my channel for some time, you guys know that I don't increase the vehicle's deliveries by 50%. 
Mine is about 30 to 35%. And you guys again can check the Patreon to test the evaluation model there as well. It doesn't make any sense to go 50% every single year, especially with cars. There's a point that you're gonna hit a plateau if 50% just does not make sense. Which is why I capped it at 30% in my valuation model. 50% year over year is, is, is unsustainable. However though, I think test, I think Elon's talking about the vehicle part of it, which makes absolute, absolute sense. In terms of the business growing 50% year over year, I do think this is still possible if FSD, Robotaxi, licensing, energy, and the bot comes into fruition. Oh my goodness. That's going to be a very sheesh moment. But again, when it comes to a point, let's say if Tesla's making 300 billion a year in terms of revenue, 50% is 450 billion. That's 150 billion growth. That does not make sense. That just doesn't make any sense. A really good return is about seven to eight percent, ten percent, which will be around three thirty billion, which will be absolutely amazing. But again, if Tesla comes with a bot, you know we expect more than that. But nonetheless, fifty percent year over year forever doesn't make any sense at all. But in terms of all overall business, I do believe we can see that until we reach the big, big numbers. Like, you get $300 billion in revenue. 50% of that is just absolutely madness. There was a question why FSD price was dropped. I was a little concerned here myself. Why would they reduce the prices of FSD? But according to Elon, he said because of affordability and a temporary low. This is a temporary low to get everyone used to it. But you know, as soon as FSD comes in, the robotaxi, the licensing, all that kind of stuff, you can bet your buns that's gonna go up. And I think most likely the one-time fee of 12,000, 15,000, whatever it's gonna be, is gonna go away. It's gonna be more of a monthly revenue and generation, software as a service. Tesla is a hardware company with software margins. That's what Elon said. So that's that. So here's the one of the most important parts of the entire earnings call. Elon got really honest. He said he has PTSD from 2009. He doesn't wanna be going top speed into uncertainty because we are in a very uncertain period. High interest rates, no one knows what's gonna happen. People can't afford their mortgages. They can't, you know, everything's gotten expensive because of this interest rate. Affordability for everybody is not the same as it was before. On top of that, you got wars going on. War just makes the situation worse. So what Elon is trying to do, and he made a ship analogy. He says that Tesla is a good ship. It's a big ship. We can, you know, endure the storm, but he wants to do it with minimal damage. He doesn't want to be going into a massive wave. And if he is, then he has no other choice. He wants to make sure the ship doesn't flip down. And I'm pretty sure Elon, I mean, thank goodness that Elon is CEO and that's how he's thinking. I have no idea how other automakers are going, are even going to be alive in the next it's gonna be interesting to see what's coming in the next three to six months, especially Lucid, but we got the Saudis to back them up. So I think they should be okay as well. But nonetheless, there's a lot of smaller ships that Elon said that they're gonna get sunk and they're gonna get destroyed if the government doesn't come and rescue them. On the other hand, Tesla is a big ship that is going really well. Again, $26 billion in cash. They're ready and they're gonna continue piling cash until they see some certainty. And even then they'll continue to pile up cash because they wanna build more factories, do a buyback later on, and all these other investments that they need to have cash on. But Tesla, but Elon is saying that he wants to take it, you know, very slow. He doesn't wanna go full throttle at the moment. As soon as rates come down, that's when he will accelerate. That is what he is saying. At the moment, chill out for a bit. Let's see what's gonna happen. We may have to reduce more prices and that's most likely what's gonna happen as well. But there's a saying, guys, it's better to get to your goal or destination late than to never get there at all. And that's what Elon is trying to do. It's a tough time. It really, it really is a tough time, especially for car companies. And Tesla right now, majority, 85 to 90% of their entire revenue and profits is coming from the car business. Energy is doing wonderful right now, almost half a billion in terms of profits energy. Absolutely ridiculous. We'll get to that in tomorrow's video. That's what Elon has been saying. And the reason why the stock is down again is because Cybertruck was the main spotlight. No one cares about anything else. In my opinion, I don't, I don't even think the energy is priced in the stock right now. It's just the Cybertruck, Wall Street, as I mentioned earlier in the video, Wall Street is like, all right, we expect this much Cybertruck to be sold next year at this price that we were given two, three years ago. And this is how much money we expect Cybertruck to make. And then here comes Elon and says, sorry, we're not gonna make any money on Cybertruck next year. Or maybe the better half of year of 2025 either. And Wall Street is like, oh wow, so all this profits that we thought of, okay, we're gonna go ahead and, and we're gonna go ahead and remove it from our projection and analysis. And so with that, you get a lower EPS, lower expectation, that means a lower stock price. Simple as that, that is the reason. Cybertruck not making money next year, stock's gonna go down, simple as that. But we all know this is a long-term thing, guys, man. This is a long-term, we are in it for at least 2030, right? 
when I first made this channel, well, not the channel, when I first was talking about Tesla and started accumulating, going all in Tesla stock, I had made a promise to myself that this is a 20, 30 investment. In other words, it's a long-term investment. Anything could happen in the short term, and I don't think Tesla's gonna pop until 2027 when we see a good amount of interest rates going down. In my opinion, I think interest rates are gonna stay up. If you guys are not following me on X, I already talked about this, made a whole paragraph on it. So I don't know what you guys are doing if you guys aren't following me on X. But that's what happened in Q3 in 2023. Really wild, awesome. This is an awesome journey, <laughs> very volatile. But welcome to Tesla stock. If you guys want to close your eyes and wake up at 2030, check out this video over here with my 2030 stock price prediction with the RoboTaxi bot and insurance, all that kind of goodies, what the stock price would be, which is absolutely mind boggling. But check it out, you won't be disappointed, guys. Get your merch, I bought the merch or your Sheesh t-shirt because this was a Sheesh Q3. And I shall see you guys in the next video, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.